Bad boys, bad boys, what you gonna do? Hi, welcome to Can of Spader Christmas. So, this is not the Game Changer episode. Still working on that. So, hope you're not disappointed. Uh, also, for the people that have signed up for the course, thank you very much. Uh, getting positive reviews on that. And so, I hope that is helping you come up to speed if or answer any questions if you had any questions about pixels. So what I wanted to cover in this episode is an effect that I used uh, using X lights in my show this past year and Gil is one of the developers for X lights and he did a video on this which I'll link in the description below. It's using value curves and value curves are extremely powerful um, features of X lights. And so this little light bar here, it was a string of 55 volt pixels that, but I cut seven of them off for the globe in my tune two sign. So this is now a string of 43. Yeah, 43. <laughs> pixels it's it's really just to show you what the patterns look like as i'm doing it in the software so normally i would not have pixels this close to each other for display but packed tightly like this uh it works good for a demo so that's why i have this okay so we're going into x lights and uh first of all i hope the air conditioner is not too objectionable on the audio but it's hot here and i'm going to run the air conditioner uh if you take a look at the configuration that i have i just have one universe uh multicast and the layout is just this single string of single string of 43 pixels and I did create some sub models um, let me show you that real quick so I have these four sub models and it just cut it uh, into fourths <laughs> and all I did to do that was I hit generate uh, vertical slices and I chose I think four at the time so it created four equal uh, sub modules this is not really relevant, but that's how I did that. Um, okay, so we go to the sequencer tab. I will create a new animation, 50 milliseconds quick start. And so first thing we will do is I will just drag an effect. Let me see. Uh, and so what I did, sorry. What I did there was I click, oh, click and then hit the letter T and what that does is it puts a timing mark there uh, you can move these around you can hit delete and remove them so that's how timing works marks work I assume you know that already if you didn't bonus uh, so let's <laughs> let's drag a effect on here so this is a bar effect. It's red and green. Uh, let's move it up a little bit. Let me output to lights. So you should now be seeing that. Okay, we've got our standard bar effect. We've got the red and green. It's going to the right. We've got five cycles just so that it looks nice so the first thing I want to do is change this red color so I'm going to right click on that color and I'm just gonna click up here and click over here to create a gradient now if you hover over this a tooltip will come up and you can click and drag that I'm gonna do it to 90 and I'll come over here to about 10 and we'll hit OK and you notice this little arrow shows up. We're going to the right. 
and if you look at the display now the red has a gradient so on either side of it it has a gradient now so you can adjust that if you want fewer pixels showing up then you just bring these in closer and that reduces the amount let's let's do that real quick this really should show up let's wait for this so we'll go in 20 oh come on we'll go 20 and over here we'll go to 80 excellent so now it's just got more dark pixels so uh, and we could do that with green we could do it whatever you want to do to enable what we want to do is enable this center point and so I will come down to custom horizontal and now the effect stops but what it allows us to do is click on this value curve now with this that's this one so with the sine wave value curve you can see that it's just jumping back and forth like that and you can go through you know each one of these different value curves to see what it does see if it's something that you like um, this one's kinda cool maybe not in here Okay. So this does it like this. So what this really does is it kind of produces a spotlight effect on your whole house model. So if I do the same thing on my whole house model, it's 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 going across everything like a spotlight. So that's one effect. You can pick, you know, just different value curves to see which ones you like. There's a square wave. not as cool <laughs> uh, I'll either usually use this one if I want a short throw or this one if I really want want it to go nuts but what you can do is kind of match this with the music that you're using and so it's just like a little left right kind of deal or up down depending on the orientation of your model so that's a quick lesson on how to do uh, the value curve for the center point on these and and really if you look at different effects they will have different value curves so this one has a value curve of the number of cycles so you can speed it up and slow it down number of pallets so I could increase the number of pallet repetitions um, I don't know let's try a different one see what value curves swag width so you could change the swag width on the curtain uh, or the speed and so really if you just go through the effects and see what they can change um, let's see this I like to ripple a lot so you can change the thickness this probably won't show much oh it's pretty long Again, the cycle count you can make it just go crazy. Um, so every effect will have different value curves on it, and in any of these, you can, you know, choose any of these offsets, or you can actually create your own if you want to. I just personally, I have found that the defaults have worked just fine for me. I hope you found some of this information useful. Uh, I use this effect quite a bit last year because I thought it was really kind of cool. So I hope it helps you with your sequencing efforts this year. Happy Father's Day to everybody. 
Thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon. And all the dogs are